Welcome back, everybody. My name is All Fun and Games. I stream every day on Twitch TV, and I also make fun little videos here on YouTube. Well, here we go. Let's do this and do this right. As I decide that I want to spawn in a worm, aka a depth worm, I'm going to fight it and showcase exactly how to do it. So the depth worm decides to start attacking you. Usually when a hound wave happens above ground is essentially what it's going to be in the caves. So if you're in the caves and a hound wave normally would show up, you're going to get depth worms. You're not going to get hounds. So as, a, as this hound, aka depth worm in the caves, decides to attack you, it has a different format, of course, by, you know, it's a new creature. So how do we attack it and what do we do? It goes under the ground and eventually what will happen is it decides that it wants to come towards you and basically attack. It kind of looks like one of the creatures that are obviously from my one of my favorite movies, Be Beetlejuice, and here it goes. As it decides to kind of run towards you, it's going to dive towards you just like the shadow creature above ground. And as it dives back down, it's unfortunately invulnerable because it's not going to be able to get hit. However, it's just a smidge before it actually goes completely down, you are able to hit it. So here is essentially how to kill a death worm. As it comes towards you, it's going to attack. And when it does, you move backwards and then attack it in between for formations. As it jumps up again, you move back and then kind of rinse and repeat. This will kind of keep going and going and going, so make sure that you have some sort of armor on. They do have 900 HP, so it's not like they're obviously very squishy, but they're also not super tanky either, as you can essentially attack them, like I said, in between their bite attacks. You keep doing this over and over again, and then eventually you're going to basically be able to kill this, and you'll be able to even attack it just before it even does a jump. Here's the problem though. Death worms don't generally show up in ones, they show up in like two to three. So you're going to want to make sure that if you do decide to get attacked by two or plus or whatever, however many you have, one, you're prepared by having a lot of armor, and two, you're prepared by having some good weapons. So let's give myself some weapons, shall we? Okay, here we go. As more death worms show up, you're going to obviously want to make sure that you get them in the same pattern. But the problem is that if I decide to attack this one death worm, well, these ones that are coming up from the back are obviously going to be able to attack me a little bit easier. So let's get them to run in the same area, shall we? As death worms essentially kind of pool together, they're going to essentially form or kind of get closer and closer and closer, and we can maybe make it a little bit easier to fight them all at once. As you can see, two are already together here, and they're basically kicking up the same rocks, but if we let them kind of wander around a little bit too much, they're eventually going to be a little bit of a problem. So we want to get them to a position where we can fight them all at the same time, shall we? I'm going to make a few little things just to showcase what it would look like. And of course, I could use probably some moggles or something, but I want to have some stuff on me. There we go. Now they're all together. We move in and now we work our kills. Essentially staying inside that circle, they all attack at the same time. And we just keep on rinsing and repeating. We don't want to make sure that we screw this up because of what's going to happen is one of them is unfortunately going to be able to attack. And we're going to screw up the entire attack pattern altogether. Now, sometimes you will get hit. Do not worry about that. A lot of times when it comes to kiting things, people worry that if you get hit once, well, you're obviously not doing it right, but that's completely wrong. The way to learn anything is basically by trial and error, and of course, if you get hit once or twice, you're going to probably want to make sure you have some sort of healing on. But for the sake of this video, as I'm showing you, it gets simpler and simpler as you eventually learn the pattern. And don't forget, if you want to worry about any type of healing, go ahead and use a Glowberry. Glowberries are an easy way of actually getting yourself some healing, and guess what? They drop them, although I do like saving some Glowberries for something different. And now you're back down to just one simple little depth worm as time gets easier and easier and easier. And whatever weapon you decide to use, just make sure it's better than a normal axe or a pickaxe when you're attacking these things. Because you definitely don't want to be doing that. And here we go. Now we actually have a few dead depth worms. And we have lots of monster meat and an easy way of healing. But I, like I said, I do find that there's a better ways of healing. So using them as an emergency is not a big deal. Especially when you're running a little bit low on light. But there we go. Now we have lots of meat and we've learned to kill some death worms. I hope this video helped you out. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.